Hello everyone, this is the last lesson of biology for this week. Our topic today is about pollination. Pollination, the transfer of male sex cells to female flower parts. If you remember what we studied in the previous lesson, in the previous lesson we start talking about flowered. Okay, we start talking about reproduction in flowering plants. Then we talked about flower and uh, we explained the flower with its parts. Today, we will talk about uh, the process of pollination in detail. Pollination, as we explained in the previous lessons, we said pollination is the transfer of pollen from anther to the stigma so the objectives for our lesson are first one to define the term pollination now by the end of this lesson you should be able to give a definition for pollination and you should be able to understand that there is a difference between uh, there is difference between self-pollination and cross-pollination. What does that mean? It means we will have two types of pollination. Then, you should be able to describe uh, some adaptation uh, of flowers or how these flower parts are uh, adapted for the process of pollination. Okay. And then you should be able to describe how honey bees are adapted as insect pollinators. Firstly, definition of pollination. Again, it's what? It's the transfer of pollen from anther to the stigma. Now, this transferring of pollen from anther to stigma, uh, this process, it will happen by two ways, two different ways. The first one we call it self-pollination and the second one we call it cross-pollination. Self-pollination, okay, from the meaning, okay, self-pollination, it means the plant will pollinate itself. But what's that mean? Firstly, for sexual reproduction to occur, the male gametes must be transferred to the female part of the flower. This we call it pollination. Then self-pollination, what do you mean by self-pollination? If you will come to the second, to this part, okay, here as you can see, here what do we have? We have a flower. This flower, it has the uh, male reproductive organ and female reproductive organ. So here what is happening, the pollen uh, the pollen is transferring from anther to the stigma within the same flower. Okay, here what do we have? We have only one flower and the pollen are transferring from anther to the stigma of the same uh, flower. This is what they mean by self-pollination. Then, cross pollination cross pollination as you can see here what do we have we have two flowers two flowers that belong to the same species okay now what will happen the pollen it will transfer from the anther of a flower to the stigma of another flower so this is what they mean by cross pollination okay self pollination Pollen is transferred from anther to the stigma of the same plant. You focus, her, focus here on the same plant. While in cross-pollination, the pollen is transferred from anther to the stigma of another plant, but of the same species. So, this is what do you mean by self-pollination and cross-pollination. Now, Cross-pollination offers many advantages, okay? Some of these advantages are, firstly, some, uh, 
Some have special proteins on the surface of the stigma that prevent pollen tubes uh, forming if the pollen comes from the anther of the same plant. These are self-sterile plants. Here what is happening, here the stigma, we say it, the pollen when it will land on stigma as we explained before, when it will land on the stigma, a pollen tube, it will start growing from the pollen. Okay, but here some kinds of uh, plants, they have what? The stigma, it, uh, it has a specific or special proteins, okay? This protein, uh, it will prevent, it knows if this pollen is coming from the anther of the same plant, uh, of the same uh, flower. If the pollen is coming from the anther of the same uh, flower, so what will happen? This protein, it will prevent the uh, pollen from uh, forming the pollen tube. So this kind of uh, flowers, we call, or this kind of plants, we call them uh, self-sterile uh, plants. In some plants, the anther and stigma are so far. Okay, some plants, the stigma and anther, they are so far. So, because they are so far, what does that mean? The chance of uh, pollinating or the chance uh, of uh, fertilization and then reproduction, it's uh, low. So, in this way, they will depend on what? They will depend on uh, cross-pollination. Uh, this, uh, this process, um, it could happen by wind, by insects, or by, uh, by a human. We, then we will take an example about how human, uh, they, uh, they will be involved in the cross-pollination. A few plants such as ash, willow, and holly have separated male and female plants. Okay, so the second point and the, the third point, they are connected with each other. Here, what will happen? We have some kinds of plants. Uh, the, the sexes are separated. For example, we will have one tree. It's what? It represents the male. And another one, it represents what? It represents a female. So, uh, now, because they are separated uh, sexes, so here, what will happen? Uh, the the anther is far from the stigma, so in this way they should depend on what they should depend on cross pollination. Here, what will happen sometimes the a, a human will be involved in this process. What they will do, uh, human they will take anth they will take pollen from the anther of male tree and they will spread it uh, on the uh, stigma of the female. This usually they are doing it uh, exactly, for example, for the palm trees. The cross pollination here, as you can see, here what do we have? We have two plants, okay? One plant it uh, it carry or it holds only the female reproductive organs, and the another one it uh, have only the uh, male reproductive organ. Like this plant or this uh, flower that it has male and female productive organs, we call it hermaphrodite. Hermaphrodite, it's a plant that has both male and female reproductive organs on the same plant. So cross-pollination, it's the only possibility for flowers that are not hermaphrodite, okay? Sometimes a plant has only male or only female flowers. This is very risky since plants of uh, the opposite sex may may not be uh, nearby but offers a very great chance of genetic variation so a cross pollination here it's important for uh, this kind of plants the kind of plants that have separated sex organs then pollination by wind and insects this process, the, or uh, transferring of uh, pollen from anther to stigma, it will happen or it will be done by different ways. Okay. For example, it's either will happen by the help of wind or 
insects. Wind, what will happen? The pollen, the size of it uh, is tiny. So they are light, so they can be uh, carried by wind. So when, uh, when there will be a wind, so what will happen? Some of these pollens will move from anther and then it will land on a stigma. So uh, this we call it wind pollination. But if the, if the pollination, it will happen by the help of insects. Now we will call it insect pollination. For example, butterflies and uh, bees, okay, uh, as you know, uh, butterflies and uh, and bees, they are always uh, sitting on flowers and they are moving from one flower to another. So what is happening when a bee or when a, any kind of insect will land on a flower, so some of the pollens will stick to the uh, legs of the, uh, of the insect. Then when uh, this insect is moving, uh, or flying from one flower to another. So when it will sit on another uh, flower, what will happen? This, uh, some of these pollens, it will land on the stigma. It will stick to the stigma because a stigma, it has a, like uh, a wax uh, substance on its surface. So this wax, it will grab or it will, uh, it will grab the uh, pollen and it will land on it. Then, uh, these pollens will start uh, growing and uh, forming the pollen tube and then uh, the process of fertilization it will take place. Now here we will see how the plants are uh, adapted for the pollination. For example, uh, why uh, some plants it depends on uh, insects while the others will depend on uh, wind. For example, let's take this example, maize okay or it's corn maize or corn this kind of flower we call it wind pollinated flower but why do we call it wind pollinated flower firstly we call it this name because it uh, the pollination of it it depends on wind now we will see what are some adaptations uh, in this plant that it will help it to do uh, to go through pollination during wind or by the help of wind we will talk about the uh, about three main parts pollen we will talk about pollen stigma and anther firstly pollen if you look at the pollen pollens are light and produced in huge quantities has smooth coat and tiny wings so if you will focus on the uh, pollen here you will see firstly they are uh, tiny they are light and they have wings so all of these features it will help the pollen uh, to travel uh, by the wind by the help of wind easily then if you will come to the anther you will see that the anther the uh, the anther the The position of anther here it's where it's in the middle why it's in the middle so it will enable it to uh, shake so when it because it's in the middle so will it will be able to shake uh, to all the uh, directions easily then the third adaptation it's stigma stigma if you look at the stigma the shape of the stigma you will see how it is it is long okay so what's the meaning of it it's long when it will be long that's mean uh, it will have a large surface area when it will have large surface area this it will increase the chance of uh, pollen uh, it will increase the chance of pollen to land on it so these are some examples of the adaptations uh, in the plants for pollination this kind of plant uh, because it depends on wind for pollinating so this kind of flowers or plant it will grow uh, during cold times in cold times as you know there will be more wind so 
This is an example of adaptation in plants. Another adaptation of plants, some kind of flowers, they produce nectar, okay? They will produce nectar. What's nectar? Nectar is a chemical uh, material. It's like a sugary uh, substance. It has a scent, okay? Now, what will happen? The insects like bee, uh, it will uh, it will like uh, smell this scent, then it will come to this flower. When this bee, it will land on the flower, so it will help the pollen to transfer from anther to stigma, and then the the fertilization and reproduction will take place. Now, you should be able to list the parts of flower, the main parts of flower, the parts that are involved in the process of pollination and also the process of reproduction. Firstly, petal. Okay, petals. Which part of plant of flower? It's petal. Petal. It's the leaves, the colored leaves. Okay. Uh, for insect pollinated, usually large. Okay. Brightly colored, scented. It has a uh, smell. Often with nectar. Okay. So because here it's about insect, so insects, there should be something that attract these insects to the flower. So uh, what it will attract them? The petals. Now, how the petals will be? It will be large, colored, and with a scent. For wind pollinated, an example, grass, okay? So the petal, uh, no need to be large. No need to be uh, bright color, bright color. No need uh, for scent because uh, there will be no insect. Okay, the pollination here it will not depend the insect. So ne no need for attraction, uh, the attracting the insect. So how the petals it will be? It will be small, green or dull in color. No scent, no nectar. Okay. An explanation for it, as just I explained. Insected are attracted to color and scent. Guidelines direct insect uh, to nectars. Past uh, anthers. Anther. The same, the same thing here. For insect pollinated uh, flowers or plants, the anther, it should be stiff, firmly attached, and uh, positioned where insect must brush against them. It should be stiff. It's stiff. It means like hard. So, and it should be firmly attached. It should not move. Why? Because when insect, it will land on it. So the chance, the chance of taking the pollen, it will be more. But in grass or in wind, here it should not be firmly attached. It should not be uh, the position of it. It should be in the middle so it can uh, like shake. Okay, this it will help the pollen uh, to move from anther to the stigma. Then for pollen, small amount of large sticky grains. Here, the amount of it, it will be less, it will be small, but the size of it, it will be large. Why? So uh, because the, uh, the, the size it will be large, so here it increases the chance of sticking it uh, to, the, uh, to the insects, okay? But here, wind pollinated, here it will be uh, opposite. The number of it, it will be more. Why? Because the chance here, uh, the chance of landing the pollen on the stigma it's less so of course the number of them it should be more and also it should be light because uh, it's carrying by wind stigma usually flat or loop shaped and positioned where insect must brush against them okay here the position of it the shape of it it should be flat when it will be flat that's mean 
there will be a higher chance the pollen to land on it. Okay, here in wind, it's what? It's long and feathery. When we say it, uh, when it's long, that means the surface area of it, it will be larger and this it will uh, increase the chance of pollen, of pollen to land on it. So that was everything for this lesson. Your task of this lesson is to solve the questions on the workbook. Again, when you will finish watching this video, please write a comment uh, so I can make sure everyone he received the video and he understood everything about it. If you still have any questions or concerns, please don't hesitate to text me. Thank you and have a good day.